Hi, friends. Welcome to Adobe Live. My name is Sin Lagos. I will be your host today. And joining me also is Gabriela Yanku. Hi, Gabriela. How are you doing today? Hi, Sin. I'm so excited for today's uh, live stream and so excited to be chatting with you again. Yeah, I'm so happy. I have hosted Gabriela in the past. She created some really amazing work. So definitely check out her website or our channel to restream that um, stream because it was really, really awesome. I'm going to say hi to a couple of folks here on the chat. We have Biola, we have Jack, we have Umacorn. And if you're joining us on the chat, let us know how it is at your where you're joining us from. I am in chilly weather. I think Gabriela is joining us from Atlanta, right? Yes, it's chilly it's, out there too. It's pretty chilly here as well. Yesterday <laughs> was super warm, but today it's 10 degrees Celsius, I think. That's probably around 50 Fahrenheit. We're entering so that zone. Yeah. 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 <laughs> so Gabriela is a multi-diverse multi talent, and I'm really excited to be here hosting another of your uh, Adobe live streams. And yeah, can you let us know what you're going to be working on today? Sure thing. So first things first, um, just a little bit about myself. For those of you who don't know me, uh, I'm Gabriela. Uh, this is my portfolio. I'm a multidisciplinary photographer and senior visual content designer at Adobe. And I love creating at the intersection of photography with motion and design. As you can see here, I have lots of different styles of work. Um, I typically like to focus on everything related to the natural world, florals, uh, food, domestic space, outer space. <laughs> and also I have a bit of abstract work and motion work because I really like to experiment um, with different mediums, um, color. I really love using vibrant colors and shapes, uh, different styles of composition, um, to create this kind of um, fairy tale-ish worlds that captivate the eye. Um, I also mostly shoot with natural light, which I think is interesting in today's um, photography world. Um, and um, I use everything uh, creative from Adobe Creative Cloud um, apps to create this work. And um, today I'm going to show you how I edit my phone photography in Photoshop and how we can make the most of GenFill and GenExpand to create imagery that focuses on climate action. Oh, um, awesome. Yeah. So um, let me show you exactly what I mean by phone photography. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna... intrigued when I, when I read <laughs> phone photography. Oh, cool. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so I have here uh, a catalog with images I shot on my phone. I really love flying and um, I always, al always get that window seat um, and take pictures. <laughs> You're that person. <laughs> I'm that person. It's my window seat. <laughs> <laughs> and um, I just think is, there is something so mesmerizing and truly beautiful about seeing our beautiful planet from above, the landscape, the geography kind of gives you an overview perspective. And um, from above, everything kind of feels interconnected. So um, for today, I want to use this um, idea of how we can, as artists, um, make sense of everything that's happening um, in the world with uh, the climate cri crisis, how we can engage with it. Is art able to do anything about climate um, change? And I think we can do uh, a lot as artists. We have our creative ways. And uh, me shooting all of these images while flying, um, and I just didn't want them to be forgotten in my camera raw, <laughs> you know? <laughs> And I think there is so much potential um, in transforming these snapshots into um, something else, into stories that um, can help us um, take action. And mm -hmm. look how many beautiful uh, shots I have here. This is just about 10% of my <laughs> images that I typically shoot. And um, as I started this year to look through my archives and find ways of how I can create stories with uh, these images, this symbol of the airplane window kind of started to to be present. Um, I could see all of these pictures that I shot and so many windows, so many different um, views and perspectives. And in a sense, it felt like 
um, it was echoing like this is a shift in perspective that we get once we look through this um, airplane window and what what's there that we mm. see. So right. yeah, the I, airplane window is so ubiquitous to everyone and anyone who gets on a plane from any part part of the world then. We all see something special and something different. We can't escape it, right? You're like, this is a show, whether I paid a little bit or I'm just going across the city. Like, it just doesn't really matter. It's still a show. You're 35 feet and 35,000 feet in the air. It is. And it's so beautiful to witness how different the, the landscape is, depending on where you're flying, the country or the state and the time of year and mm -hmm. um I, I just think it just gives us more perspective and it kind of shows us the impact we have um, on the planet. So all of these images got me thinking about uh, starting a project um, um, on how to think on planetary scale, in a sense, thinking about our inter interconnectedness with the universe. We are not alone here. We do live on a planet, <laughs> which like in your typical day to day, you don't really think about that. We are on a planet. This is our home. And yeah. <laughs> uh, when you get up there, you kind of realize that looking through that airplane window. And um, I wanted to create something out of that and then use um, our Gen AI tools we have in Photoshop to add surprising details and see how we can create um, a story with a message there. So, mm -hmm. okay. So the, these are all archive photos that you had before. You didn't take these photos with the project in, in mind. You're no. discovering it. I'm discovering it because mm -hmm. I thought there was something so beautiful about these images. And if I'm opening one, we can see um, the details we have here. Um, it's so much beauty. Um, this is the Black Sea uh, that I photographed a while ago. Another one, um, sunrises, clouds. Um, yeah, as different... I see these photos, I immediately think about all the photos I've taken that are in a similar fashion because we all end up like being in awe of oh my god I finally got a sunset or something out the window and I'm curious to see how the chat um whether the chat has similar photos and how they might be inspired by your workflow by the end of this this could be cool yeah absolutely so let's hear it people in the chat <laughs> let us know how yeah, you're using your yeah Go yeah ahead. we got folks from UK from Bro Brooklyn so I'm curious to see what those those photos are like. Yeah, so for today, I think I'm going to work on this image. I really like this one. Um, there is something special about how the light is coming in. Uh, we get these beautiful shadows and the sun rays, the shape that's being created. Um, and I just want to replace what's outside uh, with something with a landscape, with a view of Earth that's a bit more... Um, intriguing i guess uh or that you know works better with the concept that i have in mind for today so i'm going to use this image and then um let's see for the outside which one i wanted oh okay i wanted this one so this one i shot this is turkish airline <laughs> i have the, the wing there so i i, I know when did this happen i think this was somewhere <laughs> Uh, above the Atlantic Ocean, I think it was near Greenland or something like that, because I can see some sort of ice there. So I really like these abstract shapes that start to um, be visible um, above us. And I want to remove the airplane wing and the reflections from my phone. You can see the reflections here. So we're going to use um, Gen AI to get rid of all of, all of this. Ooh, and then I'm curious um, about that. Do you, yeah. <laughs> in in the Adobe Max sneaks, we saw like the reflections being a, a special thing to remove. So hopefully mm -hmm. some of those features get get um onboarded because Oh, I would love that. Because yeah. that's so annoying, all of the reflections. Yeah. <laughs> fortunately for this uh specific case we have here, I think it's gonna be pretty easy, but I know there are other scenarios when you More just complex. take pictures. Yeah, especially with um, you know, street photography and those type of um, scenarios. All right. So let me bring these images in Photoshop. We have a question from yes. YouTube. Are the images that you uploaded from your phone raw images? Yeah. Yeah. So this is oh, exactly cool. what I shot on my phone. There was no editing whatsoever in everything that you saw in Lightroom. 
Uh, same for this image here. It's raw, unedited, and we are going to edit it together and composite all of these layers so we have a beautiful um, story. So the first thing that I typically do uh, with these images that I shoot on my phone is correcting the perspective, especially for this one since I was sitting and the window starts to get a bit distorted. So I want to do something about that. Um, mm -hmm. So something really easy that I typically do, I just use the camera raw filter. So you can always do this in Lightroom as well, but given that I will do so much compositing, I rather just have all of my edits here in Photoshop. So I have the window right here and I'm just gonna go to geometry uh, here and see how we can make this window feel a bit more flat, the lines more straight, um, so it doesn't yeah. look if you're in that window seat, your hands are squeezed in just to get that further mm -hmm. angle. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So I'm looking at the lines, trying to find some of the lines that might look a bit more straight to guide me um, to identify what's the uh, angle that I want this. Um, okay. Let's see. Maybe that's too much. Maybe something like this. Let's play with the aspect. Uma Korn says, yes, you have to take a shot of your window if you're on the window seat. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> you have to. It's a requirement, prerequisite. Yeah. So let's see. So typically I do this like two or three times because it's so hard, especially with um, airplane windows. They, they have like different shapes. And especially when the shape gets distorted, it's hard to reconstruct it. So right now I have it like this and um, like really quick, I'm just gonna use the marquee tool and um, select the areas that I wanna fill. Um, and I'm just gonna let Genfield do it for me. Um, and then we'll see how the image looks. We might need to go back again and just like slightly refine the, the perspective a bit more. Let's see. Hmm. We also have the variations here, so let's not forget that sometimes this is really useful to have. Maybe this one. I tend to be very cautious of making too many sele uh, selections and generating at once because I'm afraid that like, what mm -hmm. if it, it doesn't make like the left edge as well, but the right edges look great. Um, but I wonder like if this is more economical once like the the credits become a part of of our workflow. Um just selecting everything and generating ones. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's true. Uh, but I think the thing with credits is that um they're you know, your faster. generation, yeah, there is just faster. Once you don't have credits or you're like close to finishing your credits, the generation gets slower. So you can always generate, it's just going to take a bit longer. Um, mm -hmm. So that's another thing to keep in mind. So here I'm trying to make a selection that's a bit um, more defined in the sense that previously I was selecting too much. Um, so let's see this one. And Robert I used the lasso says... tool. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Go ahead. I was just saying that I use the lasso tool just because I can do like a free form selection. Yeah, I think those came out a little bit closer, right? It mm -hmm. even imitates like if it's there's a lid there. The like shutter, yeah. Close. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I see that. So I really like this. Um, I think I'm, let me see. Typically, I like to look here in the navigator and see it like from afar <laughs> uh, to get a sense. I think the perspective perspective looks right um I don't mind it I like it so um, let's go ahead and make a selection of the window um for this I am typically using the pen tool I know that a lot of people like pen tool I like the pen tool <laughs> you like it I like it yeah I'm um, so accustomed to it it's uh, yeah me memory too. now yeah I feel like it's so easy to just like do the selection um, even oops. if I'm using a mouse which I know it's like a temperamental yeah a I'm using a mouse size. now yeah. yeah yeah so it's a classic it's one of those that's never gonna go away mm -hmm. right I hope not <laughs> uh, I hope not too yeah we have Robert saying I got a photo of the Statue of Liberty framed by the window I mean that is a lucky 
Like wow. You know, I'm definitely one of those people where I'm selecting my seat that I think, okay, but okay, sun rises in the east and sets in the west and I'm going in the <laughs> evening. So I probably should be on the west, you know. <laughs> wow. I'm going to get one of those. You are really planning there. it. <laughs> yeah, I think about my odds. How can I improve my odds of getting a really nice shot? I definitely have a shot of New York as well. I, get, I have an affinity with the idea that we fly. There's something romantic about it, right? Yeah. Definitely. Uh, all right. So I think I forgot to let me deselect this. Um, so I want to merge these layers uh, and I will just create a stamp of this image so I don't have to uh, use these layers here. I'm going to group these ones, put it in a group and forget about them. So right now I have this layer that's merged okay. and um, let's see if I can get back um, the selection. Yes, I can. And then I'll just add a mask and I will invert it. And okay. I think it looks good for now. And now we need um, the landscape outside. And I'm just going to bring in this image. All right. And I'm going to use Genfield to get rid of all these um, reflections. Um, so let's see if I'm doing it once. Let's see if it works. So I'm just going to select the sky and the wing and hit generate that, and see. That's a daring move. Yeah, <laughs> that's a lot of information that the AI needs to sort out. It needs this to get rid of so, reflections. So peculiar. It looks like you're looking oh. at the sphere, like the end of the rotation of the world, like you're outside. <laughs> oh, wow. Oh, that's wow. So cool. I kind of like it. I was I not expecting that. <laughs> I, I'm I, saying I, it looks like you're in the, you're seeing the world from outer space in a way. Yes. Yes, yeah. absolutely. So, you know, going back to this idea that, you know, thinking on planetary scale, it's kind of like seeing the planet, like yeah. we just went to space and now we, we're seeing it from above. Yeah. Um, I like it. Um, I'm going to keep it, <laughs> although this wasn't what I was expecting. But we have one of the variations actually removed the, the wing and the reflections. Yeah. So I think uh, this could be an option if we are trying to remove everything at once and not do separate selections for each thing we are trying to remove. This is there's, obviously not going to work. So I'm There's just gonna... an interesting phenomenon with like generative fill and how... Uh, you might end up somewhere that you didn't expect, but it's a good place nonetheless. <laughs> yeah, you know, I think it's, it's, it's yeah. I I I really like experimenting with AI just because I have these ideas in my head. They are not solid, right? So I'm trying to visualize what all of the, these things mean, and then you know the AI is suddenly popping one random thing. That's like the thing that I had in mind, but I didn't know I had. <laughs> yeah. So that's kind of um, interesting sometimes. And this time you just hit generate. So it wasn't like a specific ask. Uh, it was more. No, like just because I wanted the reflections in the wing to be removed. So typically I'm not adding a, a prompt for that. Um, so. Gotcha. So I'm going to keep this one. And again, I'm going to do a stamp shift option command E to get um, a stamp of this. Gonna group these um, two images and move it's them option here. Command D. Okay, right. So that merges everything from below. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Into a new image. Mm -hmm. okay, I got it. So we have this. Uh, ooh, looks nice. <laughs> That's cool. Uh, I think I need to soften the edges here a bit more. And let's see if I can mm, feather the selection. Yes, I can. Oh, perfect. From the contextual bar that's yes. awesome let's see nice let's see this up close how does it look oh that's perfect um i'm so excited to see so many options and features and actions uh here in the contextual taskbar mm -hmm. because before we used to go to the select menu and you know find options somewhere else but now yeah. we have so many contextual um, actions here and it makes everything so convenient yeah completely and it makes it more discoverable too because mm -hmm. i remember at the beginning i would do a lot of searches on uh, once that search was available i would just search like 
can this be possible? Is there a tool for this? You know, yeah. um, because I didn't know it might be somewhere in a folder. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Same for me. And just, it's so convenient. I love it. Um, all right. So next thing I have this shot of the moon that I shot myself. This image is edited, but um, I want to just um, make a selection of the moon. I'm just going to use the moon. I'm not going to use anything else from this image. So I'm bringing it here in this composition. It's interesting that we can see a photo and there's characteristics about it that let me know that they're a phone photo somehow. Yeah, yeah. That's right, right? Yeah. <laughs> what What do you think are, what, what's the aesthetic? What's giving it away? That's What do you it, think that those characteristics usually are? Usually for me is like the first photos you were showing, they're all blue, this particular blue hue that tend to be very much like how um, how phones translate that, that light color. Um, mm -hmm. So that's usually a dead giveaway right there. But this one, I think it's like the sharpness of the of um, the trees. So like that depth of field doesn't feel mm -hmm. like it comes from a, a, a camera lens. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I totally but they're, agree. They're starting to like Get mitigate some... that a little bit. Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. And I just love it because it's so convenient. And I, I think especially for photographers, sometimes we are standing in our own way and just wait for the perfect moment to have the perfect gear, to have the camera with us all the time. Mm -hmm. But we have the phone. So just the fact that the phone is always with us just gives us more opportunity to sh shoot spontaneously. And that's how this yeah. idea kind of started. Like I'm shooting all of these things constantly. What can I do with these images, which I think are beautiful. Um, so that's how Absolutely. it all started. To me, it's also from the scope of like how um, universally or having access to art uh, isn't the easiest across the world but a phone seems to be a necessary need in our mm -hmm. day and age so i would you know I've, I've traveled to different countries even third world countries and i find myself like observing how everybody and anyone has a phone so mm -hmm. that gives them the power to like take to jump into photography even just from that little phone uh alone, yeah you know yeah i agree so i was trying to make a selection of the moon uh okay let me move it up here somewhere I think I feathered the selection a bit too much um no I cannot get it back now okay I think I can just paint so let's paint see back. Mm -hmm. just because it starts to be so transparent on the edges and it's such a small object that it needs a bit more um sharpness and we're gonna make it a bit more whitish so it doesn't look that yellow um so just very carefully it's kind of hard with the mouse too <laughs> <laughs> i know it's not the case um, um yeah do you mind if we get input from the chat on like yes. any other generations yeah chat. Course. so uh let us know if you're thinking what else can we see outside of this window my brain went to maybe a comet, something of the likes, because we're out in outer space. I've also been in this headspace because I dress like a space alien for Halloween. So <laughs> that's that's <laughs> yeah. great. Let us know uh, in the chat. Let us know. Yes. Um, let's see. So I'm trying to find the blend mode that uh, I'm going to make the moon blend a bit more. Um, oh, maybe this one. No too harsh okay so i'm thinking either screen let me see oliver says a flying saucer <laughs> those are kind of hard to generate sometimes yeah. i notice because i when you really have to think about it is like the database itself like how many f a true life flying saucers do we have they usually mm -hmm. are depicted in an illustrative kind of way because we don't have photos like realistic yeah photos so I, the I database is not gonna have like a nice uh kind of bounty of like where to gather from um so i often don't get very good results with that just calling it out potentially we we get lucky here yeah and it might end up looking a bit cartoonish or um too much like an illustration so yeah. that's another thing to keep in mind when you are working with photography if you want the final 
image to be more photographic in nature, the elements that you are going to generate would kind of need to be in that same same space. Otherwise, it's just going to look disjointed. Um, yeah, because I do notice like your photography tends to blur those lines a little bit. You can't really uh -huh. tell that this was generated. It's It just blends perfectly. Yeah, and I, I, I love that photographic nature and I'm trying to find components to, to the story that look very similar to real life. Um, so that's that's how you know my mind goes about these type of things. Um, and right now I I'm just applying um, color balance adjustment, just making things to look a bit more bluish, just because we have this blue sky. I also have here a hue saturation. I decreased the saturation on the moon a bit. Um, that's just because the image that I got the moon from was already edited. Um, so I just want to make everything look a bit more seamless. Mm, okay. Yeah, I tend to find that too. I, I'll do some post color correcting mm -hmm. and that blends everything together. It almost mm -hmm. you know, like allows it to feel like it's part of one. Yeah. So let's see. Um, maybe I need a bit more blue here. Okay, I kind of like it. Um, so I had this idea in mind that once, you know, I got this view out of my window, <laughs> seeing the space and the moon, uh, what if this would be like a um, spaceship, like the International Space Station, and we'll have more windows going around, like the cupola they have on the International Space Station, where you have like oh, windows yeah. all around. Yeah. So I'm thinking we could use uh, generative expand to expand this image and see if the AI is able to generate multiple windows departing from this single shot. Um, so I kind of like that idea. So let's see, I'm going to make a stamp again, Shift Option Command E. Um, and I'm going to use the crop tool and just expand. Let's see how big I want this to be. Maybe something like this. Is that an um, official name, stamp? Or is that something that you would like to um, call Because I'm not That's how I call it. Yeah, uh, I, 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 <laughs> it's great. I think the, the official term is like merge together. Um, yeah. But yeah. It, it kind of acts like a stamp. It makes sense. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I think I... Okay, let's start like this, and then I think I want more space at the bottom, but let's see what uh, the AI is able to generate for this image. Fingers Oliver, crossed. Oliver is being really playful. Alien peering in from the outside. Oh, I would love <laughs> I would love to see you test those outs, Oliver, because you have like a whole aesthetic of your own, I can tell. <laughs> <laughs> Flying saucer. <laughs> Ooh, let's see. Whoa, hold on. Okay. Okay, yeah, so something like this I had in mind. Uh, let me generate again and see if we can get the windows a bit more. Um, so you, you didn't write concave. a prompt for this either? No, I didn't. No, I just wanted the canvas to be expanded um, and I wanted to be surprised. <laughs> I guess that's How the... did you know it wasn't going to like create like black, just like black edges on each side? It was actually going to multiply. Um, I didn't know. Um, I guess... <laughs> <laughs> you had like a the grip thing is gamble. <laughs> <laughs> I think the thing with uh, Jennings Pan is that it expands, it reads the information in the file you have in the image and then it expands ba based on that. So I think mm -hmm. it just understood that we have a window. So the closest thing it could generate could be multiple windows. I have no clue. Um, but look here, there is some sort of wall that we have. So I think there are different takes on this, definitely. Oh, I like this. Yeah, I like that. It like, feels like even, we're in a spaceship. Yeah, like even the clouds and, you know, whatever was on the ground is generated. Um, like even a reflection on the moon here, which is kind of insane, yeah. if you think about it. Kind of like it. I also like this one because it's... Um, like the perspective, it's a bit weird, so I like mm -hmm. it. Um, it's even recreating the same shadows I had here and the sunlight in a similar position here, which I find really interesting. Um, I'm just going to hit generate again, just because I'm curious to see what else uh, <laughs> it can come up with. Um, but I think I already have a favorite unless it generates something better. 
Yeah, it's really insane that it considers things like those little reflections. Mm -hmm. So, kind of the same. So I think I'm going to stick with um, this one. I think it's the closest. Uh, I really love the reflection here. There is I like something that one here. Too. I don't know what this is. We could use the remove tool to just get rid of this. Um, but, you know, sometimes when you are flying, like the windows, they get all like frosty. So maybe it's mm -hmm. something like that. I don't know. Um, but if we don't like it, we can get rid of it. And I'm going to also remove all of these other variations that I'm not going to use just because it's a good habit. Practice. But, yeah. yeah, practice to do it. You don't want the file to get too heavy and it's gonna get heavy really quickly <laughs> yeah yeah it so is. just if you're containing all that information even though it's a mm -hmm. singular layer that you're seeing there it, it gets heavier and heavier uh your your final file gets heavier mm -hmm. i kind of yeah. wish there was like a similar button so like that one you like that one and then go further from there i often just select it and then hit generate i don't Me know too. if that actually <laughs> <laughs> yeah so i don't know weird. if that's advocating for that one as i hit generate and i erase the ones that i definitely don't want and i'm generate. doing that too um, yeah. i'm not sure <laughs> i don't know if it's in my mind <laughs> is it but, i think um... it makes me feel better and hopefully <laughs> the ai will understand i really like this one and sometimes also like um, you know i give the thumbs up like this is good i really like to rate my results and you know i strongly agree i'm really using this in my project and um result is believable and um you know and then i'm submitting my feedback just because i yeah, like to it has gotten better yeah mm -hmm. yeah to improve the um, the generation so i don't know if it helps but um definitely that's something i do too <laughs> yeah i'm like i just want more of this one but i wish it was a very specific um on adobe firefly there is a a, a button that says like similar so you okay. select that one and oh yes continue. yes i know about that yeah right. i love that feature yeah so now i'm trying to get uh more content here generated at the bottom so let's see um what the ai is able to generate for me no prompt again um this is really interesting let's see the variations mm. oh wow it's a floor so now they're <laughs> yeah in perspective yeah um all you need is like a little person there and it shows the scale yeah or maybe maybe i don't need this uh let me think so maybe we can just add something a bit more surreal here in the in the scene just because um I wanted something that has to do with our planet perhaps something green so Let's see, maybe I'm going to do a selection like this, just with the marquee tool, and then let's use a prompt. Let's let's think, what, what can I type in here? So we can have something like a um, meadow um, of wildflowers. Obviously, we have to have flowers. <laughs> I love flowers. Uh, floating. It's also and... cool to add things that are completely contrasting what you already expect. So this looks yeah. very like cement and gray mm -hmm. uh, structure. Yeah. Very um, brutalism. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I love that. That's so important. hopefully the AI can just like add flowers and we can still see this texture that we have here and the shadows and the light. So let's see. So meadow of wildflowers floating in misty, soft blue. Um, so I'm going to describe the colors um let's say aqua i want some shades of aqua soft apricot soft orange mm, that's a long prompt yeah it is um do you like being that specific aqua? light light green no uh photorealistic i'm gonna tell you why i'm typing this long <laughs> okay okay so um typically i'm using two types of prompts uh the okay. ones that are very straightforward for instance red hat or whatever the color and the object or the style of the object mm -hmm. and the object itself so very straightforward the um, type of prompt and then the more conversational more descriptive like the one that i just did where i'm like really trying to imagine Whoa. and tell the ai what i had in mind 
<laughs> this result oh here. Oh my gosh. Okay. Let's see. <laughs> oh my god. Okay, so it's and not perfect, but I like it. I it, this is I just the type of thing I had in mind. How it blends together, like it starts to yeah. fade out. Um, I, I want this to feel a bit more dreamy as well. But I like how it started bringing the colors that I mentioned, and then like growing like building up the windows and like merging with everything we had in the background okay so oh, this is more cool. like this wow i love the depth of field and also it just blends together like in the past we would have to create those blending um, mm -hmm. methods we would have to spend that allocate time to blend and make it look seamless absolutely like wow. imagine how hard it would be to just work on this style of um, compositing by yourself without the AI. Yeah. Um, so I'm going to, oh, wow. Look at this. And keeping in mind that whatever photo you probably source, I mean, folks have become really, really great at this, but photos mm -hmm. you would source, you would have to kind of find a similar color palette. So you might aim for something bluer, something like that. But actually, the opposite color is playing so well. So there's like, there's other realm of possibilities there yeah and i'm gonna hit generate like several times just to see wow if there is one that i really really like and oh. um i really I mean, like when it starts to become very like this <laughs> I'm, very selective. I'm like in awe with a lot of these already <laughs> but you're like let me see <laughs> Not quite um, there yet. No, I, I, I really <laughs> like the color palette. Uh, I like the, the misty, you know, vibe. Like uh, little blue ones too. There's like yeah. kinds of blue. Um, On YouTube, uh, there was a recommendation. Maybe we yes. could have a space station visible in the distance. That would be nice. Oh, yes. Let's see if uh, the AI knows yeah. how to generate that. That would be interesting. That would be super cool. Yeah, maybe you've we can have you've worked with uh, NASA before, right? Yes, yes. I actually had uh, created a short film about the International Space Station last year. Uh, that's on my portfolio and um, how they constructed everything by hand in the low Earth's orbit and how everything came to exist. It's an interesting story and yeah. um, I highly it's recommend amazing. you to check the video. I really like this. Um, I think it starts to get um in that realm that i had in mind let me see if i can generate that space station maybe somewhere here um international do you find that sometimes like wherever you choose to place things is still kind of an educational decision like i think about how can i balance this i can't put this i can't put everything on the left i won't it would probably become too asymmetrical. I'm not trying to do that. You know, you still think about those photo compositing skills, even though yeah. you're generating things. Uh, absolutely. Because if things look out of balance, then you are not going to like it. And sometimes you don't know. Sometimes like you just, cluttered. yeah, yeah. Sometimes you just add it there and then you realize, oh, I think this is not the place where it should be. And it, it's like styling in your life when, yeah. you know, when I'm doing my um, composition and my still lives, it's like sometimes I add an object somewhere and then I don't like it. I place it somewhere else. I think the same with this. Um, sometimes, you know, right away, what's the place for that object. Other times it's like you are still experimenting. I really yeah. love these generations here. <laughs> um Kind That's of looks awesome. like the International Space Station, to be honest. Um, or one of the future somewhere. Yeah, else. yeah. So somewhere in twenty forty. Have... <laughs> yeah. So let me see if I generate again. Um, if we are getting different results. Um, also, these tips here at the top they are really um, helpful. So yeah. Uh, it disappeared while I was talking, but while it I know, generates, you... <laughs> I'm in a rush to read them. <laughs> Oh, yeah, I really like this one. Um, this one or the first one? Not sure. Maybe the chat can decide which one yeah, they like. We have, what, six so far? Yeah. Six, I like yes. That first one was super good, actually. The first that one, yeah, I think this one. Too. Yeah. Because yeah. it's also uh, not too heavy next to mm -hmm. other things. I don't want yeah. them to be, like, too secondary. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Maybe it's not that... 
up maybe we should have it more somewhere here i think it's so that's like, the tricky part speaking. right once you bring it down then it still has that outer layer um, mm -hmm. i tend to just like hit generate again so then it blends it together but yeah, oh okay is, let's try that so you mean like you just move the object and then you hit generate yeah okay i haven't tried yeah, this technique before that works um because then it'll find ways to blend it together again or it gives you something completely different oh yeah <laughs> we have <a> different object. <laughs> but it, it was interesting <laughs> enough it didn't yeah uh, i think you would have to then select the outer layer and then hit blend uh i mean and then hit generate to make a blend mm -hmm. okay and probably with this one would be really hard to make a selection given how it's so it different is. yeah yeah yeah, that, that's the thing with AI, because now since we've changed the placement, we need to regenerate and we're not going to get the same object again, um, mm -hmm. which is unfortunate. Um, so sometimes those, it's it's random. Yeah, yeah, those are the elements of control that I think as creators, we often want more of. And I think that's that's been wonderful feedback that we've been getting, like just um, the insider team here, like we all often get to hear things like that. And then they become implemented. So it's kind of awesome to hear feedback at all. Uh, so send it, share yeah. it. Somebody <laughs> hears it. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I think especially for creators, like we want quality, we want results to be realistic in the sense that we don't want them to look fake and we want to have the control over how we manipulate these elements inside the, the composition. So yeah, it gives room really for pre-production in a sense, because then you can think, oh yeah, I know for sure I can create that, right? Like mm -hmm. because you can guarantee it. Yeah. Um, all right. So I'm thinking now let's let's try a different prompt for this um part of the image. Uh, maybe I just don't want flowers. Maybe I want something like um maybe something very wild uh like fern moss so let's see how i will <laughs> create the prompt for this so on youtube they were like you can try generating an astronaut astronaut too instead of the space station um gosh an astronaut out there just sort of floating <laughs> it's kind of <laughs> sad kind of scary it's kind of sad yeah <laughs> yeah um so let's see um i'm thinking i mean in today's context for... it would be sad maybe in the future there's a level of like hey they're just exploring because they can come back not so much you know maybe they have some mm -hmm. throttles or something yeah absolutely so and i i think with ai and people i think it has gotten so much better than originally when we initially started so it's always like interesting to see how the model has evolved and it's able to generate better yeah. anatomy and things like that but look at these results yeah we're on <laughs> model I... two now so <laughs> yeah. wow look at that oh wow i love it oh wow Look oh my this. god that one's so pretty it, i think the moss kind of helps it look a little yeah. bit more blended together it looks like it's crawling up into the, mm -hmm. the frame mm -hmm, absolutely let me hit the generate again and see so the As, the, the prompt yeah. was really simple this time it's just wild fern and moss lush plants so um, this is the type of results we get for this prompt um what i've experience with this um generation is that the more descriptive you are with your prompts the better the results will be okay um kind of like the the moss um maybe i, and I should say i just like want to put it into perspective for folks who were just joining in um this this entire like scene here is, is was born out of just a phone photo yes uh, <laughs> so, let's not forget where we started let's not forget. <laughs> feels like ages ago now but yeah, yeah. it's kind of Ooh. amazing where you can source like a set a level of inspiration and then start oh from God. there and that becomes like your foundational element and then generate from there um, yeah it's like a puzzle in a sense um or like a painting where you start to put like different strokes of paint yeah. and the sketch starts to get shaped by by the ideas you have and the colors you have on your palette i feel like it's the same here we started mm -hmm. with those two images um and look at us now we have this beautiful 
Yeah, that's a good analogy. Yeah, because that's how the process was. Oftentimes, I think a big conversation about AI is how we're reducing that workflow, which is good because it means speed. But then for folks, it's like, wait, but I used to like that workflow. But then I, I kind of pose the question, is there a new workflow you might end up liking to, right? Is there a, a room for a brand new way of uh, approaching this art form mm -hmm. you might be really in into? I think that's really interesting what you just mentioned. See, and I think we should stay super open-minded and really experiment. Look at this. This is this is beautiful. Like we have a forest <laughs> here. We have um, the ocean or whatever is left of that ocean we initially had. We have the outer space. And I, I just love how everything was generated here. And I didn't do much. I think we did how many generations? Well, we did a couple. <laughs> But yeah. just because we, I wanted, I wanted these um, results to be a bit more photorealistic. So I, right. I needed to generate a couple of more times until the AI kind of like warmed up <laughs> for my expectations. But uh, yeah, just keeping there's... an open mind about like this type of things and experimenting is just like trying a new technique, almost like or like a new hobby. I, I just want to see how this turns out, and this is the result, and I think it's stunning. Yeah, it's it's fun to be able to experiment. I also think it's a it's a nice invitation for like a reframing your creative thinking. So for example, we were at first just like thinking, okay, this is looking outside into space. So maybe we think of astronauts, we think of like space related things. But what if we think outside of things that are related? So like ferns and moss is completely like left field you know, mm -hmm. um, all together. So it reminds me of in college, we had to like, um, create a project based on two unrelated elements. So like mine was like an iron and also a Samsung laptop, like, and create a brand new product out of those two by just <laughs> borrowing attributes. Like what are the attributes here and here, you know, attributes and function and make a brand new product out of that. And it's a good creative exercise to think of the op opposite element. And create a prompt out of that potentially. Mm -hmm. oh, wow, I I love that, and I totally <laughs> agree. Um, this makes me think like when I'm looking at this um <clears throat> beautiful green landscape we have here right now, all of the ferns. It's like going into the woods and just having to breathe um clean air. And you know we are here on this international space station, so this is you know our reality right now in this image, right? <laughs> We are not yeah. on Earth anymore. We are in space yeah. and this is the air we breathe. So I'm thinking um, like a couple of days ago, I heard this um, story about the canary birds they used to use in uh, mines all the way back in 1800s in Britain, US and Canada and Colombia. So the miners um, used to use this, used to take with them these very tiny canary birds uh, with them uh, underground. And when the birds stopped singing, that was like an, a, a warning for them to evacuate because the birds were able to detect like carbon monoxide and other toxic gas gases um wow. so i heard this like two days ago and i found this fact like really interesting how we use um birds and wildlife and all of this to um give us warnings about the state of our planet so mm -hmm. looking at this image here right now kind of reminds me of that so i almost mm -hmm. feel like i want to have a bird here just yeah, like a symbol absolutely. of air quality and um, you know, we don't have any plastics here and all of that, you know, the problems of, um, one of the problems that we have with climate, you know, the, the plastic waste. And, um, I just want to add yeah. like a beautiful bird here somewhere. Our Let's see, maybe here. oceans. Yeah. I mean, with plastic. And I think this is the next problem that I want to, to test once we find a beautiful bird to add here. Um, yellow canary bird so with plastic is like it's so sad what's happening right now and like one of the things when I'm flying and looking at the planet it's so beautiful but then once I coming back on earth <laughs> I see all of the plastic waste oh and god. all of the things that contribute to oh my god look at this oh my this god. is beautiful <laughs> look at the shadow <laughs> wow I'm like <laughs> okay let's see the other variations I mean, for those folks who are bird watchers, I wonder if you can recognize that bird, or is this oh, a yeah. bird, a, a bird of the future, 
somewhere, an evolutionary bird. Wow. She's so beautiful. Um, I absolutely love that you're arriving at this visual based on um, some strong understanding of like, okay, you want to advocate for a certain concept and this is uh, it's going to stand in as a symbol of how we can protect Earth. I love that yeah. you already have those kind of parameters in mind to know how you're going to kind of build up this frame. Um, yeah, absolutely. Because you know what I think? It's typically when we think of climate change and the climate issues, generally speaking, it's like we see all of these kind of sad and boring images of polar bears floods and fires, like all of the issues, right? We see images of that and um, campaigns about that. And it feels like old news because we've seen it represented in the same way for so many, you know, years and feels kind of boring. So this got me thinking like, what can I do for humanity? Like, you know, individual sense, right? Sounds like a big question, but then it all starts with us at individual level. And um, these are some of the ways as, creators as artists that we can contextualize all of this abstract information about climate change and then add our creative superpowers to create something that's a bit more inspiring and more yeah. you know so that's how it started in my mind I just wanted something that's um, a bit more creative and yeah, you know absolutely. it has a story and sometimes it, all it takes is a, a level of inspiration to actually inspire action as opposed to uh, fear mongering which can sometimes just make you feel like oh well what can I do right uh, we, we can yeah. feel very small in those terms but I think it's like kind of the folklore story where like this the the wind was blowing and blowing at this fellow's uh at this fellow to remove his coat and the wind and the sun made a bet it's like who can remove the co coat you know the fastest and the wind just kept blowing and blowing even though being strong and um putting that pressure and he just the guy just held on to that coat harder <laughs> um but the sun it just blew this i mean it was just warm and sunny and eventually the 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 fellow just like removed his coat on his own so it's just kind of interesting where like you know pressure and those type of things failed like a little bit of kindness prevails um mm -hmm. so that kind of that kind of thinking i love when implementing it into design and how can we Im inspire action without fear mongering which absolutely the opposite and sometimes all you need to do is just learn more about the cause that you feel more passionate about, learn what you can do, learn how to use your uh, creative superpowers, like create a po poster, create an image that like, that's the first st step. Like you take a step forward and you, you create something that's um, your vision of the world. And I, I think that. it's really interesting to think about the type of legacy we live for our future generations because one interesting fact that we don't typically think about is that everyone we know or have known or will know have lived live or will live on this planet right so what's the type of legacy that we live for our future generations if we um don't think about we if we are not more self-aware of our uh, impact on the planet and that's why i said that sometimes we don't think about that we live on a planet because we are here on earth but then when we get to fly we get to see the perspective it's like an overview perspective and we get to see some of the things that um you know we can do and sometimes from up there from above the clouds it feels like things are more easier and you feel like i have all it takes to make this change <laughs> and yeah. sometimes it all starts with a you know silly simple idea and can you know create like a ripple effect you never know yeah inspire the conversation at the very least mm -hmm. um, yeah Robert says it was uh because they did a little bit of research here budgies parakeets that they used in the mines how interesting oh yeah Bud budgies budgies the little parakeets oh they're so cute I, I I mean I'm from a tropical place so like seeing parakeets was just a normal occurrence on day to yeah. day <laughs> that's nice that's that's a yeah. beautiful view and for sure. <laughs> yeah. um all right so I like this um image a lot but I also want to try another prompt if everyone is up for testing more prompts uh, which I think that's the most exciting part with AI, uh, getting to write prompts that deliver good results. So 
Uh, I'm going to turn off these layers here. Um, so up until now, just to quickly recap, we had uh, our first generation, which was a meadow of wild flowers. Now we have this wild type of, you know, forest kind of here in our International Space Station. And the next thing that I'm going to generate is going to be something related to plastic. Because that's another big topic. <laughs> um, so how we can think about plastic in a way that... Um, in a way that makes us think differently about it and maybe do something about it. So let's see. I want to generate a wave of many plastic bags and uh, floating. So I'm going to use the, the prompt that we initially had, something very similar to that color palette because I really love the results. Um, how is it? Floating in misty... Soft blue, aqua. Like whenever you see a plastic bag just sort of floating, you can't stop staring at it. It's just floating in the sky and got caught up by like a little... Oh my god, yes. It's so wind. sad. <laughs> yeah. Um, I'm going to tell you an interesting fact about that in just a second. Let me just type yeah. in this uh, away. Yeah, I also remember one time, um, you know, that just I was in, in the ocean and I remember seeing... Uh, a water bottle and it just like the way like it's um what is that water uh gosh I forgot the name but it was the way it was just there sort of in the center of like this gorgeous sunset happening and it was just the one thing then in the center um so um like my friends and I were kind of like hip-hopping the, the the rocks and we ended up like grabbing the the water bottle so it's kind of a common thing to having communities that live close to the coast that they end up feeling that responsibility to mm -hmm. uh, protect their area because they, to them, like they have built this bond with it that whenever they see something like that, it feels like it's just calling your name. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So first generation, I had the typo. So we just got these random balls generated. <laughs> so I'm just going to delete these results. Lovely Looks colors, like but egg yolks. Not, <laughs> yeah. But not a thing I was looking for. So quickly deleting this. Uh, what I was looking that for was, was more, yeah, something no. like this, like plastic bags, you know, and we have like all of these different colors. And um, there was this research I read that said that unfortunately, microplastics exist today in all types of environments on Earth, which is insane if you think about like everything we like the My air God. we breathe, the yeah. yeah. The food we eat, the um, air we breathe, everything has these microplastics, which are like so, so tiny, spread across the earth. Um, so imagine the most, you know, like virgin type of environments, like the Amazon forest or like the, the most um, remote areas, remote area. Yeah. And they also have microplastics somewhere embedded in the environment, either because in the, the ocean, the water, the ocean, the air, like everything mm -hmm. carries, carries it. So that's kind of sad to think about. So that's yeah, why so I wanted. We can't process plastic. Yeah, it, just because we, you know, dispose of it doesn't mean it disappears. It just degrades into smaller and smaller pieces that eventually get into everything we consume. So mm -hmm. the more you consume, the more we will have. And just doesn't disappear, unfortunately. Um, so that's, I, I think, in my opinion, that's the biggest problem we have. Um, so I wanted to have a visual representation of that so we can contextualize this problem in a more visual way. Um, so um, I kind of like this one. feels like we have these bags. They are kind of tied at the top. Um, let me generate more and see. And I also like the colors because sometimes, you know, with climate change, we see like these very boring type of visuals. Um, and that's one of the things I like with AI because we can generate something. Oh, look at this. Wow. Oh. Looks like an ocean. <laughs> yeah. It does look like. Oh, but that's so interesting so because beautiful. it lets you know that there's points of references that are actually in context with you see? plastic alongside parallel to ocean even the ai knows <laughs> yeah I mean... even the ai knows like and and the results are so beautiful and kind of suiting to the eye like how like the shapes and the colors and how everything kind of floats um in the space so obviously we have 
microplastics in in space as well in the outer space so just another thing we could that's you know, a wild thought yeah i think i think plastic was invented somewhere in the 1900s so it hasn't even been that long yeah in a sense right of course long for us but um just the idea Ooh. that they can become part of our air mm -hmm. look at this one as well like really good results with this prompt um also the colors I'm really digging all yeah, of the colors. Yeah, did you put that in? Like you said, colorful in the prompt, or um, I used the same colors we initially used. So we oh, have okay. soft blue, aqua, soft apricot, orange, light green, photorealistic, soft and apricot. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I love that. <laughs> That's what you I'm know, a bit more complementary colors just to get <laughs> just because we have so much blue, right? We didn't want yeah. to feel too blue. <laughs> just something to contrast with that i don't know which one i like more i really like this one just because we see the bags more um i like this one because everything is kind of floating and feels so real in a sense this one as well feels so surreal and like all of these transparent wave of I, plastics yeah i just want to say that those color decisions that you're making are so um clearly like you employing some of your like artistic techniques photographic techniques uh, so it isn't just a basis of like generating a prompt you also have to be conscious of those those ideas and how you want to implement them in your photos mm -hmm. yeah I think that reflects the artistry because like sometimes we are like scared that working with um, AI tools it feels like cheating especially as photographers because we don't get to use our hands or our camera to create it. But in a mm -hmm. sense, you are writing the prompt and you are imagining it. So the more you write there, the more your vision is going to be. So and nobody's stopping you to use the same techniques you are using in, you know, your practice with camera and, um, you know, shooting images with AI. I think it's in a very similar mm -hmm. um, way that you can do the same. Yeah, it's interesting because it's kind of different. It's like a reverse engineering because... Uh, undoubtedly those techniques took you took anyone a long time to even have someone who's not a photographer won't even know where to begin or an art, not an artist won't know where to begin with those uh, parameters in a sense but yeah, yeah it's kind of cool to reverse engineer that and be like what makes a good photo what makes a good scene um, and looking at the type of art that you already have produced looking at your portfolio and seeing what are the type of colors yeah, you typically absolutely. gravitate towards like what type of styling what type of object like taking inspiration from your own work I think that's when things get really mm -hmm. interesting because you will be always more inclined to go with a certain type of color palette and a certain type of you know artistic choice so let that be reflected in the way how you're using the Gen AI tools because then the art you produce, it's going to feel more like yours and it's not going to feel like you're cheating. Like, oh, the AI produced it, you produce mm -hmm. it alongside. Yeah, I, lo I love encouraging that. I think before all of this AI developed back in 2019, I would often uh, pose the question, uh, show me your favorite photo. And then I would pose the question, why is it your favorite photo? And sometimes folks did not, did not know how to really dissect their own reasoning of why this ended up being good at all. It's just the feeling at that point. But this kind of forces you to think about that a little bit and mm -hmm. then write it out. Yeah, like being aware of the type of choices mm -hmm. you typically do in the art you will produce. And probably for painters or illustrators, since they are working more closely with colors, these things might come, you know, more, more might be more obvious, maybe for photographers, not necessarily. For me, it was just because I love styling my, my scenes and I always look up for colors on how to pair those colors with textures and things like that. So... For me, it was kind of an extension of doing that with the camera and now doing it with the AI. So, yeah, absolutely. I definitely um, want some room for, for you if you have the the space for it to show us some of your SCAD exhibitions, because I think there's a certain degree of uh, wondering or question um, that I would love to demystify of like, how can I take my AI work in any regard like in any exhibition space, gallery space? How is that even possible, you know? Yeah, um, absolutely. I, yeah. And yeah, maybe we five minutes at the end. Yeah. We can talk at that, about that image we generated, um, the S still life with folks. puppies. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, so I really like, I don't know, I have, I'm have i having a really hard time choosing which variation I like 
best um, kind of like this one for now. I think we have so many um, variations here. Definitely, if you were to create a series out of this concept, you'd have at least three images in this series by now. Mm. Um, but I want to create one more. <laughs> okay. Why not? <laughs> I typically like to have like six images in a series. Probably I'm, I'm not going to have time for six a day, but uh, why not another prompt? So Six images. Okay. <laughs> I, yeah, I really because... think of like the, the lucky thir three sort of like the Well, two that's kind of pair, the start. Three is a group. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah three, like is just your... <laughs> three is just you are getting worked up and then at six you really know what the concept <laughs> is. And it's like, I'm really sure this is gotcha. going to be a winner. And then 12, you are like, oh, I'm an artist now. <laughs> so I can something with global warming right is that we already we and i'm just gonna keep everything else the same like ocean there let's see this looks very so let's see another photoshop here um advocating an image alone to do that yeah and if you guys have any um okay i think we need a couple of more generations um I necessarily think it's the ai <laughs> not knowing i think it's me not knowing uh <laughs> like how to describe the things i have in mind it's like oh i have these floating ideas how i can you know describe them um mm -hmm. or sometimes they get interpreted differently like you mm -hmm. say floating yeah if, or for example i sometimes write uh if i write palm tree i think it's a palm of a hand yeah <laughs> absolutely that's a good one <laughs> yeah um so sometimes like i just generate oh these are ugly okay i don't like any of these um maybe i just like keeping or it coral a bit more reefs loose. underwater coral reefs um that's a big issue coral reefs tend to die and um, oh yeah look white they look completely white um, but i love when they are bleaching yeah because of the high mm -hmm. temperatures yeah mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I read about that. That's quite unfortunate. Um, but they are saying that it could be reversed in case uh, ocean yeah. temperature drops. They can uh, go back to the way they used to be. So, yeah, yeah. I actually got um, to visit a protected coral reef and in, in, uh, where the country I was born in, in Roatan, Honduras. And it's so oh, cool. Oh, nice. Because I've never seen so much color. It's like a forest of color beneath the ocean. It's amazing. Yeah, so I'm, I'm starting to delete all of these generations because I think we have reached our limit here. I think the limit is 60 generations or variations uh, here in the panel. So I'm 60? deleting the one. 60, yeah. I think it was Can we reach to that 60. limit? <laughs> just, with that, this fish, just with You're this funny. fish here. <laughs> yeah, but we had like so many different um, aesthetics for this image. We had the forest, okay. we have the plastic bags, we had the meadow. So now we are doing the fish. So typically, probably we'll have like a separate image for each, like a separate file for each one. But um, today we're working on the same file. So sometimes it gets out of hand really quickly <laughs> yeah i kind of like the colors uh i'm not sure if um we'll be able to get any fish in here um but it kind of speaks to that idea that the ocean is boiling if, like, that water waves um yeah the ocean oh you want the ocean boiling in some regard um not necessarily i mean wow. um how you how you said how you said it? Oh, uh, I was what? just thinking about like uh, waves, uh, just kind of when you see them on a shore, it, the, just the, the shore waves. Um, and I'm not as, as a prompt whiz at the moment. <laughs> just throwing well, you know, the scriptures, writing... <laughs> nouns and adjectives out here. Writing prompts is really hard. Uh, and I <laughs> yeah. think that's the, the hardest part with... Um, Jenny I tools just because it's so hard to describe like these uh, ideas you have and put those ideas into words I think that's really yeah. really yeah. hard oh. oh I love that the ice melting that could be another mm -hmm. oh yeah the ice caps ice melting. melting um yeah. so yeah that's so interesting that you say that because yeah sometimes I find myself like reading a book and I'm just in awe how, how the author was able to describe something so specifically and it's it, it kind of turns on a light bulb in my head I was like oh that's how I could 
potentially describe something the next time I want to say, hey, I want loose clothes or something like this. Like sometimes I don't have the right uh, terminology in my mind because maybe I'm not a writer by the fault. No, yeah. Most of us aren't. But it's a new like skill set I'm sort of building with the purpose of prompt generating. Um. Yeah, absolutely. I'm not a writer either. And I um, totally feel that I don't have the right words when I need them. <laughs> yeah. And English um, is, is it your second language too? Yeah. English okay. is my second language. So I, I think we need metaphors and like really uh, nice words to describe all of these things that uh, we want the AI to feel just because typically as humans, we feel rather than, you know, so now we have right. to make the AI feel all of these words that we have in our heads. Um, mm -hmm. I like this, how we started creating like um, waves uh, of water, um, some eyes here. Um, yeah, this one so maybe cool. snow. And you know what's interesting is that a lot of these these um, works of art that you're creating, maybe they're not at the, maybe currently you don't have all of the tools. Like for example, this is model two of Firefly mm -hmm. uh, powering these generative AIs, but potentially, you know, I don't know, t the timeline seems to be really squeezed here, but let's say two months from now, we are five months from now, maybe next year, there's a whole nother variation of that. Would you like finders consider like revisiting this these problems absolutely yeah because i remember when um adobe first um announced the gen ai tools we have with firefly and now everything integrated into the creative cloud apps i remember how the model the the, the number one like the very first yeah. version of that how that was generating images and now we have gotten so much better at generating people and right. visual styles and we have a much wider range I, I i think the range of styles is not quite there yet but mm -hmm. i think it's gonna be probably by next year um and we will have much better imagery and i love to revisit some of these images and concepts and see using same prompts what what uh other you know results i might get yeah um, yeah i would be super curious if like the refresher of uh, these yeah. water prompts could be uh something <laughs> completely new what is this, this here this is this is kind of interesting feels like ice it's ice like yeah. broken ice like ice chips or something like the waves are hitting this you know <laughs> imaginary yeah. international space station and then the water gets in and we have ice i don't know something like that that's how I imagine that the AI imagines <laughs> it. <laughs> so it's like, let me translate that for you. <laughs> um, so yeah, I think it's it's a it's a lot of experimentation, definitely. But um, I really like using technology, the creative technology we have today to imagine outputs. Oh, look at this, nice. So eventually, we got some ice, <laughs> like polarized. Yeah. yeah, I was looking uh, at the replay in that the fresh one but yes i see that one it's beautiful nice um and we have a question from you too why does generative fill <laughs> okay this is a little bit not specific but why does generative fill at times get a little wonky with the images it comes up with uh but i don't know what you mean by wonky but in the context of this potentially how it started to get a little bit more illustrative why that might be yeah, so I think if it's in context of this particular example we are working on here, probably doesn't have enough context to pull information from. Maybe the prompt is too abstract and it doesn't understand um, exactly what I mean. So maybe adjusting the prompt might result in better outputs. Um, yeah. Maybe it's not clear enough for the AI. So yeah, I would usually, tend to, to second yeah. that too. Yeah, usually you have to adjust the prompt if you see that the result starts to get a bit wonky. Um, you might need to get more descriptive and most probably I need to do that for this prompt here as well. Um, but just because I I like to be surprised and see how I can experiment with these prompts and how far I can take them without needing to be too descriptive. I was uh, just using the same kind of prompt today and just adjusting it slightly. But for those of you out there, if you really have good prompts, just go ahead and test them and experiment and see what type of results you might get. Um, in the context of my example, not, of, not all of these variations were what I was expecting, but the ones that right. we had 
previously um like this one was okay -ish. i really like the color gradients on this one the one with the plastic bags i think this was pretty realistic and going back to how yeah, many generations yeah i love generations. the plastic bags because they're so colorful so they that and one i, I really like the and i think it also one. has something to do with the um, uh, information that AI has because our Gen AI tools at Adobe have been trained on Adobe stock and publicly mm -hmm. licensed imagery, public domain imagery. So maybe there is no record of an image that AI has learned about in the style that I was looking for. So maybe right. doesn't know yet. So perhaps sometimes that's why the results are more wonky because it doesn't know yet what you mean. So that's actually a, a very um, in-depth co conversation to be had. <laughs> Why is it wonky? But it, it is true. I was going to cover that second part you just mentioned. It might not be in the database at all. And luckily, we're, we have, we're um, ethically sourcing from the artists that have allowed us to basically use these images to feed into the AI, to train the AI. Uh, but one big question I often ask myself when using any AI generated um, anything is um, what, think about how long our internet has been available and what have we oh, yeah. fed the internet. And and so there, as, as a result, as we continue to learn maybe things that we maybe in 2000 we're okay with today we're no longer okay with mm -hmm. you know how does it have biases how how are there is there room I love for that. us to feed it something new that is more relevant to our uh, uh, current way of thinking um, to preserve a more honest uh, way of generating work that is is true to how we have evolved also but if we don't feed it to the internet or we don't feed it to these uh, ethically sourced spaces Potentially, we won't have them in the database to then generate these images. I love so, that. Yeah. And that's 100% true. Like we have higher expectations of the imagery we work with today. Like a couple of decades ago, we were okay-ish with anything. Now we have gotten to a level of sophistication um, that hasn't been there yet. So we expect more. We want high resolution. We want to be able to have control over all of these layers, be able to move, move all of these objects on the canvas. So we want so many things to be able to do at once. So I think that's also another thing to think about how far, how far we have gotten. Yeah. Um, and I'm really excited about what we are able to do today as artists, like using these Gen AI tools to expand on our creativity and improve um, our workflows, create things faster, spend less time, you know, pushing pixels, more time creating yeah, art. Absolutely. <laughs> so yeah, I, I think I that's like kind of exciting. Of that. <laughs> <laughs> Especially with compositing. I mean, yeah. I don't know how much time I would have spent generating this image here. Um, like not generating, like manually editing it. Before now we got spent... to concept two, concept three, concept yeah. four. It had been probably two weeks by then. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so... right, right. Do you um, want to go do a quick overview of how you, where we started and mm -hmm. how we arrived at this? We have like about five minutes left and I'd okay. love to kind of see some of your channels too, where we can connect with you with some time. Um, yeah, so uh, we have started with, um, let me see, I have sun here that's blasting on my monitor <laughs> it's kind of hard to see where we started but oh um, yeah you have that natural light going on. <laughs> yeah <laughs> the glow yeah your own so, brand <laughs> so we started with um an image um of earth that i shot from uh, an airplane that we generated this beautiful starry sky onto we also had um this airplane window that we corrected the perspective and um, selected the window so that we have um, the um, image um, coming through. We have the yeah. moon. So that's how uh, we started. We did a few adjustments there. Um, and then we started expanding the canvas and selected one of these variations that gave us um, these three windows. Um, very similar to the International Space Station. Um, we expanded again to get a bit more space at the bottom and then started generating um, different um, environments for this uh, scene. So initially we had um, meadow. Amazing. 
and then we had the forest different variations with the uh, moss and the fern the plastic bags really beautiful results here and then we tried something with fish or boiling ocean um so we had like a few different results here and then we ended with this um ice melt uh type of uh story yeah. So, so cool. how many variations, right? How many stories in one oh image? Gosh. Yeah, in a matter of an hour, which is like yeah. such a such a feat. Um, when we think about traditional workflows, uh, yeah, absolutely impossible. Yeah, I love to see where we can also find a way to connect with you, keep mm -hmm. up with all your different ventures because you're multi diverse in so many different. Yeah. Uh, same like you, sets. Sin. Yeah. <laughs> so lovely Thank to, that's to why get we to really... chat with you yeah <laughs> that's why we vibe so well um yeah. so again this is my portfolio you can find me on instagram at gabriela yanku and uh, this is one of the image uh, that uh, sin mentioned earlier that mm -hmm. we produced in another adobe live stream this is a still live scene that i shot and we composited together and then we used a gen field to add this beautiful surprising um butterflies and ladybugs and insects all around without being too invasive so uh, it feels very photographic because it is we just added um, just a few details here and there sprinkled like salt on top of a delicious you know meal that you just yeah. cooked <laughs> Quite so, literally AI ingredients, right? Yeah, That's AI like ingredients, yeah. yeah. So if you don't want to go over the top with lots of variations, this is one of the ways that you can use Gen AI tools in your more photographic work and um, just complete the scene and create like a beautiful story there. And um, and on my portfolio, you can see more of, of the work that I'm producing, um, more con cosmic connections and here, more perspectives with the um, airplane window, wow. uh, more abstract work, work about the beginnings of Earth, how Earth started. These are photographs of uh, abstract paintings I did with ferromagnetic fluid, which is really a very interesting technique. Um, so multiple ways that you can apply your photographic skills to different areas and mediums um, of interest. And then uh, you can always check my um, NASA short films. Welcome to Space is the story of the International Space, International Space Station and how it was constructed in uh, low Earth's orbit by hand. Please watch it. It's a really interesting story. It's a short documentary that was uh, awarded at NASA's Inner Space and I'm really proud of and um yeah this is this wonderful is... yeah i love seeing all the bit the the bandwidth of like different uh work that you've done but you can see a little bit of you in all of them really yeah great. in the colors you can get the sense the of colors. the colors yeah. <laughs> <You> <laughs> with my cinema graphs you see the greens the blues um oranges i really love being in this complementary um color palette and pinks and uh, soft pastels but i also shoot like more dark type of photography and um i love creating cinema graphs there is also uh, a stream that I did on that so if you want to learn how to create cinematographs with your still photography go watch that because it's a very interesting technique um, yeah. especially if you are passionate about like motion and adding um, living things living a little details. bit of magic yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah absolutely this is amazing Gabriella thank you for being part of the stream I'm so happy that I got to host you again uh, the chat is so amazing as always bringing up those questions that let us dive deeper stay tuned because we're gonna have the holiday photo cards uh hosted by shauna lynn up next and um <clears throat> excuse me thank you all for being here thank you gabriella thank you so much sin thank you everyone and um have fun with uh, gen ai <laughs> yeah see y'all see you